Welcome to Political Arena. Political Arena is a program where we discuss political happenings in our country, Nigeria, and other parts of the world. I am John Glover. I will be your anchor man on this Monday's edition. Uh, before I introduce my topic and my guest, let's quickly look at the news roundup. Welcome to our program. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, has won three out of the six federal capital territories area councils in the just concluded election. The three area councils won by the PDP are Kuji, Bwari, and the Abuja Municipal Area Councils. In Kuji, the PDP's candidate and Kuwait chairman, Suleiman Sabo, pulled 13,301 votes to defeat his closest rival, Sariki Amidu of the APC, who secured 7,694 votes. The PDP defeated the APC to win the election in Amak. The council housing all the three arms of the federal government, including the presidential villa. The PDP candidate Christopher Zaka polled 19,302 votes to defeat Mothala Karishi of the APC who scored 13,249 votes. The PDP won in 10 votes while the APC won only 3. The Kuba chairman and the PDP candidate in Bari, John Gabaya, defeated Audi Shekolo of the APC. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has admitted that there were glitches with the usage of the bimodal voters authentication system during the Saturday's Federal Capital Territory Area Council election. Speaking with John Lees after the election, the INEC FCT Resident Electoral Commissioner Yaraya Bello said that in, the, in some cases there were misunderstandings with officials handling the machine. Bello, however, said that the National Commissioners and six other residents, Electoral Commissioners deployed for the election are expected to write a report on the situation in order to find a lasting solution to the problem ahead of subsequent elections. A northern-based group that goes by the name Arewa Vanguard for Peace and Unity has come out to declare to the Executive Governor of Delta State, Dr. Ifai Arthur Kua, to, as a matter of utmost urgency, come out and declare intention for the presidential position in the country come 2023, making the disclosure at a press conference organized by the group in Kano on, Sat on Sunday. The National Coordinator Awa Abubakar said they are resolved to support the governor stems from the fact that he is a detribalized Nigerian because he is the only governor that is accommodating almost all the major tribes in the country in a state peacefully. It further described him as a source of peaceful coexistence of the country, adding that he is therefore worthy of contesting the presidential seat. The group gave the governor a deadline within which to come out and declare attention to contest all that will engage on a peaceful protest at the government house in the state within the next two weeks. That is it on our news roundup on political arena. We will take a break. When we come back, I will introduce the topic and the guest for discussion. Stay with us. <music>
Vote of Order Minority Leader. program the topic for discussion today is fct council election fct council election and to do justice to this topic uh, we have comrade olivia afia who is the chairman pcroc delta state command you welcome to our program comrade olivia it's my pleasure and also sitting next to comrade olivia is a veteran journalist in delta state uh, comrade Emeka Wonkocha is also a public affairs analyst. Comrade Emeka, you're welcome to our program. Thank you for having me. Thank you, you. You're, you're always known for your fearless uh, uh, take on issues. Yeah, welcome. Obviously, very German issues. And, and, and now that you're sitting close to a security expert, I know that uh, we'll do justice to the topic. Yeah, it's going to be a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> welcome again. The topic I said is a uh, FCT Council election, but just before we look at uh, the topic. There was this uh, news that made our news roundup. A northern based group uh, uh, called Arewa Vanguard for Peace and Unity uh, calling on the governor of Delta State, uh, Dr. Ifayo Kowa, to run or to declare for presidency in 2023. And they have even threatened that if he refuses to do that, they are going to organize a mass protest around the country. What's your take on this, Comrade Maker? Uh, yes, I think uh, it may not be a surprise to Nigerians because. Um, the sing song is um, tailored towards getting the right caliber of persons you know, to drive the wumbling Nigerian government you know, to a um, state of progress and prosperity. So uh, that group from the Northern Aziz, they may have seen um, good, um, um, they may have seen good potentials you know, in the person of the governor of Delta State. You know, uh, you will understand that uh, opinion you know, could be lost based on what you feel and what you see. And uh, before that group would come out, you know, to want to call on the governor, because the way it sounds, now he's been pressured, you know, to, to indicate his interest to run for the seat of the presidency. That tells you that they actually have believed in him. So he has the capacity as a Nigerian. He's well educated. I mean, he has been on the political arena over the years and uh, nobody in data state i can say you know critically would rub the shine from him you know because he started from for the grassroots and you know grew to where he is today so i think going from that experience he could actually make a good candidate for the presidency so um another question would be if he actually attains that then what next all right, what next? All right, let's hear from uh, Comrade Oliver Ayefia. Uh, what's your take on this? Uh, do you see this as a vote of confidence that the governor of Delta State is doing well for a northern group, not a group from the south-south, uh, a northern group rooting for uh, Southerner 
to be president? Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, politically everybody has a trends and uh, they are also entitled to opinion. Mm -hmm. But the man, Senator Dr. Arthur Ifan Yokoa, is a man who has uh, differentiated himself and also integrated himself in the political arena. Starting from ward to local government to become a commissioner, now become a SSG, became a senator, and became a one time, two time governor of a state. Who also set a standard in the PDP? I think the little I know when he chairman the national convention, it was peaceful. It had a similar uh, uh, exercise that uh, brought in the party chairman. Even when there were crises in the party, he was able to manage them and midwife a process that gave the PDP at the national level the unity of purpose. And so maybe, you know, Prophet and awful value that too. So if far from the north, some the other white youth political vanguard have seen the potential in him and they are drumming for him, it should not just be fallacy. If it is from the depth of their mind. Nobody will deny his brother from becoming the king because if you say your brother should not be called a king, you cannot be called a brother to a king. So it will be a plus to death and, and of course South South as a whole. It's going to be a why, you understand me? So whether we like it or not, in the days of Jonathan in the presidency, it was like presidency is in the South. And if they find it worth again that after the eight years in the North and we are coming to the South again, they have tested perhaps his loyalty, they have tested his love for the party, they have tested his potential. Considering his academic qualification, his awareness in politics and in leadership, and inclusion of youth in his leadership by, uh, we'll call it a roadmaster. And he's a man of his word. And so maybe there are things that he has done in the north that maybe is not even seen to us. And that has called for his uh, support from the north. If other sees it, as a way of uniting the nation. Wow, it's a better thing for all of us. And I know that the uh, debtors will have no option but to queue behind that. Well, well, well the, the, the ball is in the courts of uh, our governor who is in a position to decide whether to heed their call or oh, no. allow them to go on a mass protest. Uh, but uh, like you said, uh, if your brother is a king, you will be called the brother of a king. And so who, to, who would love to have a governor? Uh, uh, become the president of Nigeria. So I think the call should be should run, uh, should it? A uh, decision will lie to <laughs> the people are suggesting. All right, no. <laughs> I know that you're a PDP man. I just wanted to pull your legs. All right, let, let, let's move on. Let, let's let's uh, uh, come back to the cruise of uh, 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 the matter. That's the FCT polls. Uh, the PDP and APC seem to have shared the six uh, uh, council uh, areas in FCT three apiece, PDP three and APC three. Uh, what, what, what's your take on this, comrade uh, Mika Wokocha? What, what's your take on this, sharing it apiece, three, three? Yes, um, politicking and politics itself is the game of a competition. Mm -hmm. and, and that tells you that uh, our politics is very maturing mm -hmm. from that end. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, to be truth to fact, I, I don't think I've had any news you know about disruption of the elections you know that will make one to want to say that election was not credible so that tells you that um, uh, the people you know actually identify who should be you know their leader who should be their chairman so if we have three three this way i think it's even better for us you know so that there will be a seamless competition now it is going to be how would I at pace PDP or how would I at pace APC in terms of driving development? Okay, because now the eyes of the people, the interest now will be which party would now show more strength, you know, in delivering the dividends of democracy. So it's a good thing now for them now to look at it and say, going forward, in order, you know, to change the narrative by way of either, you know, having more more seats, you know, or rather in the subsequent election. So we have to put our feet on ground and ensure we attract development and do those things, you know, that will elevate the people, you know, that will bring about, you know, the better well-being of the people of the Abuja area councils. I think it's a healthy competition and it has set a template, you know, for competition, healthy one indeed, 
So it is going to inspire, you know, the chairman now to want to do those good things because if they fail, automatically subsequent elections, you know, will be skewed against them. So they want to up the game and make sure they run on that good pedestal and do the network that the people want them to do. All right, thank you very much. Uh, uh, for now, they have two comrades here. So, uh, uh, comrade uh, Oliver Yefia, your fellow comrade has just said that uh, there were no skirmishes in the election. It was peaceful. Uh, first of all, generally, how will you rate the election? Thank you very much. Uh, the saying always goes that after election, no campaign. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that people do not have right to uh, approach the tribunal, okay. and if not justified, they also have the reason to go further. So, but, but if you are to rate it generally, is it uh, peaceful? Uh, I think the, this the, result is negative. Uh, there's a negative. We're coming to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, no, 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 let's leave it at that. Uh, we'll, we'll come to that. Yeah. Let, let, let's look at the PDP uh, staging a bounce back, uh, taking up some council areas, uh, sharing it with the APC now. Uh, is this to, does this mean that the PDP is at the verge of bouncing back uh, to national reckoning when it, in terms of uh, politics now? Uh, true, but when any member, I don't like a PDP member, that's why I'm asking. No, don't personalize party <laughs> issue on this issue of political arena. And based on my position, too, as the chairman of PCRC, we are okay, now you're now political, political now. So, okay, uh, whether we like it, so you or renounce your membership, easy, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so whether we like it or not, but yes. there's always this. Uh, political nature in every human being. Okay, okay, let's go straight So to whether we like it or not, mm -hmm. there are factors that we consider. So we need any to person that back for, Any person that for mm -hmm. there are two things that comes in the mind of any man. Okay. One, if a, if a foolish man falls, mm -hmm. a tick of rising immediately. Mm -hmm. And sooner or later, that same thing that brought his first down for will bring it down again. Mm -hmm. But if a wise man fails, he does not tick of rising immediately. He thinks of what less to his failure. So that when he's able to stand up again, that thing never again can bring his failure. And PDP has spent complete eight years of study, losing. Study, study the reason. Yeah, the failed. reason why we failed. Okay. And you said we? We why Nigerians. Okay. Yeah, you okay. understand me? So it's not one man thing. Okay. And I will not say theirs. It's okay. We are all part of We, we, we understand. Uh, so 24 years of uh, PDP holding the national and at the verge of okay let's try to make transformation somebody came and said we are doing change and the first part that was changed was in abuja don't forget that i come met to jonathan we are seen leaving him out and they all domiciled in abuja fct there and that was where they started their change from now that they may be they've seen the nigeria moving forward with transformation again it has gone back to that place and now that we got it, don't forget that one of the local government, the council chairman you are talking about, now has the, uh, the Asso Rock too. Yeah, we are coming to that. <laughs> so if he has this Asso Rock, are you trying to say that we were hearing the voice of Jacob, but the answer of Esau was what we were feeling? Do you understand me? So whether we like it or not, the same people who oh, oh, were making things unstable initially now wait as a grief people as the acronym they say, to make their own Congress. Now they discover that it is not the way a manner that it was negotiated before gathering, that when sharing time now came, they seen it too. There's what we call the first home. Don't forget that any politician after SDP and NROC, but from the 1999 to date, every politician that cares to know or want to listen is a product of PDP. If not all, I give 99. They are all product of PDP. And so the prodigal sons will always be there. But don't forget that it's only prodigal sons. We also have prodigal fathers. So maybe PDP at a point in time became a prodigal father. The prodigal son have to run away. So it takes two prodigal father and son to reunite again. And if they are coming back to make that, it means that with what we have seen the past eight years, People cannot afford to take Nigeria back 16 years. All right, thank you very much, our comrade Emeka Wonkucha. The uh, PDP won Amak uh, look, Area Council, which houses the, the, the Asurok and also most of the government offices, apparatus, were all there. And you see the opposition party, PDP, taking it over from the APC. What does this uh, portend for the APC? Uh, obviously, like I do see. Uh, um, Politicking, electioneering is all about the best candidate, you know, should be given 
the opportunity, you know, to take the day. So the PDP candidate that won, like I do say here, that the election was was free and fair. That, that tells you it is a representation of the choice of the people, not minding the constitution of that area, whether the Asso Rock is there or the seat of power is there, or it is being controlled by the APC. For me, it has no relevance. What we are after here is that the PDP has won that place, and the man giving that seat. You know, was elected by the lotorates who are not branded PDP or APC, the, but the Nigerians, you know, who want the credible man, credible man to be there. Because the difference between, you know, party loyalty and the lotorates, some persons that went there to vote when we are political, they do not actually belong to any political party, they are just simple Nigerians who want to elect a candidate based on his personality, not based on party. So at the end of the day, you discover that the man won. So he's been there. Whether the Asorok is there or APC controls the place at the federal, shouldn't pose any threat to him. Rather, he should put his hands on ground and do the needful and deliver good, good judgment and good, good deeds to democracy. And if he does that, it will further create more relevance. It will further popularize the PDP and it will further, you know, advertise the PDP, the potential that we could do the best. Because you know that over time, Nigeria has been bedeviled by the problems of bad governance, shenanigans in politics, and people are willing to vacate from that, from that evil part. So, it is a good development for me, because it stress now that there is a departure from the old saying that because it is APC or, or PDP, you know, controlled area, the other party would never venture you know, to win a seat there. But that has actually broken, you know, that jinx. Now that Nigerians are getting, you know, aware of what good politics is all about. So that is actually what I expect, you know, to see in a political system that we should actually identify the best in respect to a party commemoration and give the person our vote. Because at the end of the day, it is not the party that matters. What matters there is good governance. So who has the honors to deliver the good governance should be given the opportunity to do what? To take the place and do what you ought to do. I think it's a good development for me. It's a progress in the Nigerian electoral system. And I say kudos to the electorates for ensuring that they elected whom they want. And that is my take. All right, thank you very much. Uh, there, 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 there was this uh, poor turnout of voters uh, during the, the, the election. What could be responsible for this uh, uh, voter apathy in the FCT election? Thank you very much. Uh, whether we like it or not, once love is getting fed, you will no longer see the good things in your uh, partner. Mm. When there is broken promises, where you see changes that you have said and they didn't come. And so perhaps the purpose or, or the reason behind low turnout would have been people have lost interest in whatsoever. I think in the days of PDP in those days, uh, the Europe will say, Rune, that is it has been done. Maybe it's a mindset of some person believing that, thank God that Baba is there and everybody up there is APC. I know the Bible said, the so I went to sow a good seed, he went home to sleep. Another so I came to sow, he sowed a bad seed. So, but the question was, should we invest now? The, the advice was, uh, no, leave it. When they all grow together, we are going to save, we are going to invest all. So I'm sure this is, was an apple time that the PDP would have taken chance of. You understand me? To see, perhaps it was believed that whether we vote or we do not vote, who will become the chairman will definitely be the chairman. So overconfidence. Overconfidence. If not, whether he has said uh, it is just the good people that voted or our political people that voted, no. There was interest in leadership in politics. There must be interest. And the interest is trying to look at the weakness of your opponent. And when you are looking at the weakness of your opponent, that now becomes your campaign strategy and manifesto. And so party line is also considered because people will definitely compare A and B, PDP and APC. Her life was before in Abuja, before the past seven years plus now or six years plus now that we are counting seven years anywhere for now by May 29 the people have considered how things have become unbearable people have considered okay no need 
But yet, there are some persons who are interested in leadership in politics of FCT who believe that if they must change other parts of the country, let us start from the center. Don't forget that I told you that because they know that the moment that Aso Rock is changed, it's now a win that message will be sent to New Sankrani of the, uh, Nigeria, and people will see reason to it. You just introduced our northern political, uh, Arewa political uh, vanguard. They are drumming support for a certain uh, is it that they've not seen other governors in South South? I don't know what I'm saying now. But that's also a, a wind of good news on the pipeline. There may be some mistakes that were done before, some things that were thinking, we thought that were done right before. Over the years, uh, the wrong has been seen. And maybe PDP is right here now to right the wrong. Because they are to do that, the need for it now, for this low turnout, the low turnout in FCT, and like I said before, it should not be far from, uh, okay, whether we like it or not, somebody must win, and that is this. All right, all right. Let, let's hear from a comrade, a maker, one coach. But before then, uh, viewers, you can call us so that we can hear your contribution and your views uh, as regards what the topic of discussion. Call us on 081503728000. The number is displayed on your screen. You can call us. Uh, we'll hear your own. Uh, view. All right, Comrade Wokocha, what could be responsible for uh, the voter apathy in the council election, FCT council election? The voter apathy, like you say, uh, uh, Mr. John, is not peculiar to the very election we saw a few days ago in Abuja. The voter apathy has become, you know, a Nigerian sign. And do you know what that tells you? No. It tells you that the people have lost confidence. Mm. It tells you that there is moral suspicion of those who had been leading us. It tells you that the people do not have that confidence you know, in the electionary system of this country over time. Because what will result in voter apathy, and most interestingly, on the other hand, you will recall that most of these persons you know, have their PVCs. So they took the pains to go registering and ensuring that they have these PVCs. But to deploy the PVCs, you know, to ensure they exercise their franchise, now becomes a problem. That tells you that they have actually lost confidence in the system. And just that the question needs to be answered, but we don't really need to actually look into the books to find out the facts, because the facts stare us in the face. Would you say there is good government in this country currently? You know, irrespective of the party line, you know, we have seen that the Nigerian leaders within the political scene, you know, have not actually shown readiness to deliver good governance to this country. Today, it is annoying to note that this country stands as the poverty capital of the world, whereby about 46% of Nigerians now live below 1.9 dollar a day do you know what that tells you and annoyingly too you know they took over this ignominious award from 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 india just in 2018 here so that tells you that over time there has not been good governance because the constitution tells you and made it critical that the only the primary purpose of governance is the welfare and the security of the citizens so in other words if you could not do anything then the welfare of the citizens and the security of the citizens should be given priority now just take the welfare would you say the government of this country over the years prioritize the welfare of the citizens and that is actually the cruise of governance so if you look at it so the people know that their leaders have failed them over time so when politics comes in the understanding is they have come again all right thank you very much that, 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 that is what, what, what you get when you have a comrade <laughs> uh, in, in the studio with you uh, anyway thank you very much uh, comrade Mika Wankocha, for your contribution let's look at INEC Let's look at INEC. We, we, we did see that uh, in, in the election, there were complaints of uh, late arrival of materials and INEC officials. And that also affected the election because the election did not start in most of the centers until 10 a.m. Election that was supposed to start by 8, started, uh, the process started by 10. So what, what, what could you say uh, was responsible for this INEC? 
and the 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 this have a role to play in the election proper. That's why they are there. So they never have a role to play. They no, that, that is the later. The, what I'm saying is that the late arrival of material did yes, affect that, the That's election. a syndrome. That's a syndrome. Yeah. That's a syndrome. Mm -hmm. When we look at corrupt politician, corrupt politician, uh, in my own perspective, I see corrupt electorate. Mm -hmm. And the process that midwife the between the electorate mm -hmm. and the, the, the elected persons mm -hmm. is the INEC. And that is where the critical stage is always from. Uh, when they believe that it's always at the late hour they will be running. Where were they carrying this material from? You see within FCT there. Mm -hmm. Yet you will have reasons why they stay two hours beyond time. You know, well, before I, 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 I gave, the reason they gave was uh, fuel scarcity. Fuel scarcity. Were they not aware that there will be election? <laughs> How many vehicles were they using to pull this in? Or was it that they are going to? Well, every, every local government has electoral officer, he owes. And at least in my days in NYC, I partner, we worked with INEC in distribution of PVC and the rest. So at least I have little understanding about that. Most the electoral materials have arrived, the uh, local government council, that read of the election. The answer is no. Truth about it, I think there was only a program I did here. I said that for you to have a corrupt politician, there is always a civil servant who is behind teaching him or her how to do it. And so, Factors that would have led to delay, you understand me, is best known to INEC, but just trying to remove the face of persons from it. In this negotiation, so I, I the late say, hour, I, I to say it's <laughs> deliberate. It was deliberate. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> if not otherwise, they have all the provisions. All right. You understand me? They have all the provisions, and the election was not planned for in two days or in two, in two months. All right. Let, let's look at the, the, the other the, the other problem uh, registered by INEC, the by modern voter credential system that like Bivas, the Bivas uh, machine also malfunctioned, and the areas where it worked, it was very slow. And it slowed down the process. Even INEC had to even accept all these lapses on their part. Comrade Emeka Wonkucha, going forward now, uh, this BIVAS is one of those uh, uh, strategies adopted by INEC to, to ensure a credible election in 2023. But with what we are seeing now, is there hope in 2023? Yes, um, yeah, yes. That, that question is very germane. Is there hope in 2023? Yeah, concerning credit uh, they, they could do hope if ANEC improves you know, on those costs you know, that have been identified. There will be hope. Because um, going by the understanding, you know, INEC you know, remains well for Nigerians. Because it's an innovation you know, that um, tends to do what? It, identif it identifies you know, your fingerprints and your facial uh, features. So these are very, very critical component, you know, that would cut off, you know, this ugly incidents of electoral fraud. You know, it is a progression of the former smart card reader. And the, this BVS, you know, had been put to test in Anambra election, which first also Koi, the National Commissioner, you know, and the chairman committee of voter and the uh, electoral matters had come to tell us that it actually assisted the commission you know to record very laudable achievement he had come to tell us that though there could be challenges but the idea of jettisoning the bvs is out of it that rather i neck would improve on the areas you know that it had not performed well and going by that it may still be possible that not just that the BVS itself, the device, you know, has problem. What about the management system? Those that manage it, how was the training? Because you need to look into this. Because if it didn't work, we didn't even look at the man who is actually operating it, whether they had the technical know-how to operate it. We only say BVS didn't work. But now, the reports from the from the uh, electoral resident officers that were deployed to monitor elections would not tell whether more of the complaints were from those that handled it. So if it was about poor training, then I need to beef up that and ensure that the personalities that will handle these things are properly trained. Because these are sensitive materials. Then on the other hand too, if it is a device, it could work anywhere in this in other other places of this country if there was a, a technology a technology you know gap they should bridge it up too because nothing is impossible it's an electronic device get the best expertise 
deploy them to work. Because I have seen across Africa that these systems have been deployed and they had seamless elections. So why would ours be having problems? So that is right, why I you. get worried as in things that man right, can do that does not require rocket science could be done here if we actually are actually serious and mean well for the growth of this country, knowing fully well that right. election is important. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I, 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 I could see uh, Comrade Olive, Oliver, if you are itching to say something, but just before you say, let me just add this. Uh, you, you know, you know uh, INEC did come up to say that uh, poor network also affected the machine, but this was the same INEC that said during the electoral uh, amendment bill uh, discussion, then he, he came up to say this machine can work even offline where there was no network, but they're coming up to say this now. Uh, having this in mind, to what you wanted to react to what your fellow comrade was saying mm. all mass choice is another mass poison mm. uh, if he's disappointing us uh, he's appointing us uh, too mm. in nigeria we can just wake up any day and bring anything to convince people that's why in the era of a uh, snake swallow billions mm. of naira monkey or babo carry some days and people will just come that a uh, ass girl use a uh, 300 something million naira to buy something and that was just the end of the story so we are still insincere to ourselves, let's be frank. Insincere to ourselves. If not so otherwise, people use POS, people use ATM, people use uh, system, to do, they use data, they, they brag, they do everything. Uh, but whether we like it or not, it's going to be in favor of one side. Come 2023 general election, if they continue to have this failure. Because the only way that you can ring an election without proof is to tell you that the material that's supposed to capture it is having a problem. It was done to Jonathan that even his own turn, his yes. <laughs> card reader that he introduced could not function. Rejected. You understand me? And so whether we like it or not, it's an advanced way of trying to tell Nigeria we are moving forward, but that's not the problem. The issue still remains that the INEX system, whether we are going to change the name, whether we are going to change the name, I don't know. All right, but the INEC itself needs to be overhauled oh. because they are people that know how to do this thing. It's just like the Nigeria game uh, football match. I, 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 I think we, you, you keep your best in level to bring. Just, just, just hold on. We, we, we have a caller on the line. Hello. Where are you calling from? What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, Warrior. Okay, we're listening. You're welcome to Political Arena. What's your contribution, please? Yes, my contribution is that uh, for God's sake, all these old politicians should make techniques for the younger ones. <laughs> we are tired of these old folks trying to uh, uh, deceive Nigerians, but they forget that God is there watching everybody. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. He said that all the old politicians should do, but I do know that there's a saying that the older the wine, the sweeter it becomes. But well, it's just his opinion and my own saying. But but I, I don't think it's the old person that is uh, responsible for this. I neck and beavers not working. The, the, the the but, but, but let me just quickly ask because of time, me. because yeah. of time, mm. let's just go in, in the in the council election in FCT council election uh abaji area council mm -hmm. the in abaji area council the returning officer mr gabriel modi didn't announce the name of the apc aspirant that won that council election apc won mm -hmm. as a party because <laughs> there was a problem now the problem is the the party the flag the, bearer the, yes the the flag bearer the police still in court because uh, Mohammed Loku mm -hmm. won the primary, but his name was substituted, and Umaru Abudulai was a shortlisted as the party's candidate, and Loku went to court. He won in FCT High Court. Uh, Abudulai appealed. He went to appeal court. He also won. Abudulai appealed again, and right now they are in Supreme Court. And so I like yeah. it's at the crossroads. So, do they oh. give a certificate of return to? Uh, so, uh, they, 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 they gave it to uh, Abudulai Umar without announcing. Yeah. So, so right now, I like it's at the crossroads. Who to announce the name of the winner? Pending so Supreme Court. is still our election problem in Nigeria. Uh, well, 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 so, so then, uh, let, before we look at I like, now let's look at uh, 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 primary uh, internal politics in internal democracy in our parties is still a problem. Because it's like I, APC seemed not to have learned in 2019 where there was no candidate in Zamfara, yes. no gubernatorial candidate in River State mm. because of lack of internal democracy. 
uh, what, uh, let, let, let's ask of a comrade now. What, how can we remedy this situation? I think he, he did mention something here that strikes my mind. Mm. Sincerity on the part of Nigerian politicians. See, sir, if you... The thing may be surprising for you to note. If these politicians should, you know, um, bring their certificates or their profile, make it public, you wonder that these guys are paraders of beautiful and excellent certificates bringing to public uh, glare. Now, but when it comes to, you know, you standing and doing what is needful so that our country can move forward, you discover that there is always this personal interest being imputed, you know, so changing national interest. So at the end of the day, they must to change the system because Nigeria is a country where anybody can do anything and go scot free. If there are consequences, just as in the electoral materials not coming on time, who and who should be responsible? Because I next has said 830, the materials must be at the polling units. So if they didn't come, I think questions should begin to be asked as in who did what and who did that. But at the end of the day, there's no consequence, so anybody could do anything he wishes. All right, thank and you very much. So thank that has always been a problem. Let's go clear up. Yeah. Now, uh, come, come the affair. Maybe we'll have another uh, say, uh, continuation of this. But, uh, come the affair. Quickly, your closing remark, and also just quickly touch on the internal democracy, lack of internal yeah, they, democracy. No, not only in like APC, in yeah. all political parties. parties in, in there Nigeria. is always interest, interest. and people want to override interest. Uh -huh. uh, but that, that, that's one thing that Nigeria has uh, escaped just now that Buhari did not get this concept to the issue of direct primaries. primaries. And, and when you are running direct primaries, whether you like it or not, it has advantage or disadvantage. Then when you are having the primaries, the indirect primaries now, it, it also has its advantage or disadvantage. Okay. So whether you like it or not, ideas will be coming up. And politicians will always want to overshadow the others. They always want to Intimidation is part of politics. And so using your money, your influence, and whatsoever you have is part of internal democracy. Well, yeah, Be that as it may, okay. it is the prayer of delegates. It is the prayer of delegates that they should have more co contenders in internal democracy. That will swell in their pockets. <laughs> Is how okay? that, 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 that's corruption again. <laughs> All right, Corrida, uh, 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 one, one your, your closing remark, just one sentence. Your closing remark, yeah. I think uh, we must move this country forward, okay? So, um, we have to ensure that we do the needful, you know, to move this country forward. So, everybody should come on the table with clean hands so that we celebrate this country in 2023. 2023. All right, before I ask you for your closing remark, I, I want I wanted to just look at it because you were once a party man. You said your position has made you denounce your membership. No, first. you don't say not that. Not denounce. All right, all right. Let me let, let me not say that. We're in the public but, but, but you were you were once a party man. Let's use it at that. Now, we INEC do monitor primaries in, in, in primaries and how come INEC uh, official that is on ground in each of the primaries cannot still know our judiciary the system. Is our judiciary election. system. Our judiciary system need to be worked what, what i'm saying that before, before even going to, to court, what i'm saying that is. even before going to court if i neck no sir there, there's, one the I neck, there's one i neck oh, here yes there's it's another the, i neck somewhere. somewhere whether they like it or not okay, so like, democracy. So like the two i neck officials without no, monitor no, i just problems. told you now people use this. their personal relationship okay. before the primaries Maybe I know somebody in this office or in the INEC office. I have somebody above. I have somebody below. And this uh, uh, conflict of interest uh, is always there. But be that as it may, don't forget that the judiciary system, we're supposed to be the hope, the last hope of the, the average man. I want to use the word common. The average man is <laughs> not being monetized that the highest bidder. It's always at the verge of it. So that's well, why you well, see well, 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 a case will be decided in court A. That same case is decided in court B. And that is where you always have okay ejection, well, non ejection. Well, we will we'll leave that as an allegation against the judiciary. Let's leave it at that because in this case, the judiciary has upheld the uh, uh, the mandate given to Mohammed Loko who mm. won the primary, uh -huh. was substituted, and he has repeatedly won in two other courts except this uh, final court, which we believe that we do justice. Uh, as, as it should be done but just uh we'll wrap up with that uh, i want to thank my panelists for their time 
comrade Oliver Eyefia, who is the chairman of the Delta State Police Committee Relations Committee, PCROC, uh, Delta State Command. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. And also, comrade Emeka Omokocha, a vocal journalist at the Public Affairs and you're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much for Thank your you time. Very much. Also, special thanks to my producers, uh, John Cena Bastiji and Grace Atu. Also, my executive producer, Pastor Malcolm Oteri. I remain Chan Glover. See you same time on Wednesday for another exciting edition. Have a blessed day. The quality of relation you share with the people around you will determine the quality of your personal, professional, economic, and social life. Our relationships teach us more about who we are and who we are not. Relationships challenge us to grow in ways we might not grow on our own. Positive and high energy relationships will add more to your life than you can imagine. Negative and unhealthy relationships will not only subtract from you, but also destroy you. Our emotional life is primarily controlled by the nature of our relationships. It is more important to be the right person than to find the right person, to be in harmony with yourself before you try to harmonize with anyone else. So you must first heal and empower your relationship with yourself, and then move on to building deeper relationships with others and your community. You will never find the perfect relationship external to you unless and until you perfect your internal relationship with yourself. There are a few things that you need to hear that you probably don't want to. Loving yourself is just as important as eating healthy or making a living. No matter who you are or what negative things you may have done in the past which no longer exists, 
You have something amazing to offer the world, which can come to fruition best only when you have self-love. Human body and mind is highly receptive to the messages and feelings put out by the thinker. How we feel about ourselves impacts how we function. When you feel or think, I'm ugly, I'm stupid, I'm no good, I'm fat, your body and mind responds to that, consciously and subconsciously, impairing and impacting delicate functions of the body and thought processes, even the immune system, and restricts flow of creativity, holistic thought, expression, and joy. Now, if you feel bad about yourself, I'm no good, rephrase that to I am improving every day and put out the effort. Rephrase I'm ugly or I feel ugly to I see the beauty in my being. And if that's too cheesy for you, you can just pick a quality or two or ten that you like about yourself. I like this about myself and focus on those things and you'll be surprised your physical appearance will actually improve if you stay focused on the things that you like about yourself. The manner in which any relationship will work in your life is by first making a great relationship with yourself. First, you must learn to love yourself. Because if you're getting into a relationship to get love instead of giving that love, then there will be two people starving to take each other's food. Remember, you can't give what you don't have. Ask yourself this question. What is there worth loving about yourself? I really believe loving ourselves starts from a place of reverence for life. So when people say love yourself, I go, yeah, you know what? First, love life. Be honoring of the fact that you are alive. Love yourself because you've been granted life. You've been given this gift of life. There must be a reason or a purpose or a mission behind that. At least that's what I believe. I, I believe in God. I believe in the fact that the, the odds of us all being here is pretty rare. That may not be your belief, and that's totally cool. But what I really do hope is that you have a reverence for your life, an appreciation, a deep gratitude, a sense of enjoyment or enthusiasm that you're alive. That's where loving yourself has to start from, outside of self, outside of others, right? Starting from that place, everything can turn for you in positive directions. To improve the quality of life, we need to improve the quality of our relationships. And the most important lifelong relationship we have is our relation with ourselves. You have to make yourself whole on your own instead of searching for somebody to save you and complete you. That's not how it works, unfortunately. And I know that there's a lot of movies and a lot of love songs and a lot of cartoons that tell you otherwise. But reality is that if you're not happy, it doesn't matter how amazing the person beside you is, you're not gonna see it because you're gonna ruin that relationship because your relationship with yourself is not there yet. Now. A relationship is not designed to complete you. A relationship is designed to complement your completeness. And if you look at it like that, that here I am, I need to get 100% settled in me, 100% okay with me, 100% loving me. Doesn't mean that there's not a lot that I can grow in, but I cannot look for a relationship and look at the relationship that I'm currently in are the one I'm pursuing as something that's going to help me be complete because that's a lot of pressure on that individual they have to do too much work and remember you have two imperfect people colliding together to create the perfect relationship when the perfect relationship doesn't exist you will have the perfect experience that can exist between two imperfect individuals success is worthless if we don't have someone to share it with what is it that we want in relationships what motivates us to enter into a relationship? What causes us to separate from a relationship? Why do some people want to get in and some people want out of a relationship? And after all, what is the purpose of a relationship? Well, the deeper purpose of relationship is actually to grow your capacity for love. If you're really engaging with someone intimately over time, they're going to press your buttons, they're going to annoy you, issues are going to come up. And if that relationship is going to last, you're going to have to grow big enough and grow enough self-mastery, enough capacity to be able to deal with that and stay with the person, stay loving the person. When you're doing that, it's, it's growing the love, which is great. You become capable of so much more love than ever would be possible otherwise. 
And the thing with that is, as you're doing that, what it's doing is it's evolving you and the other person. Instead of being the person you were, you become this person with way more capacity and capability, way more compassion, way more understanding. You've evolved, you become a different person. And that's the true capacity available in relationship. It actually evolves human beings. And evolution is actually about how much love can we bring to ourselves, to life, to other people. That's what relationship can, can do for you.